Welcome to Engineering Studio with Dr. Muhammad Tahir. In this video, we are going to discuss about the concept of side sway. In this video, we will discuss what is side sway, what are the causes of side sway in a building frame, and how we can prevent the side sway in a building. So, first of all, side sway. What is side sway? Any appreciable lateral or sideward movement of a top of a vertical column relative to its bottom is called side sway or lateral drift. For example, we have a column. So, if we apply the load and it bends in this manner, so we will say that there is no side sway. But if it bends like this, its top is moved in the horizontal direction because of the application of load. So this is termed as side sway. So its top has been moved from here up to here. So this is termed as side sway or drift. So next is causes of side sway in a building frame. So the first is if the length of columns is different or if the columns have unequal length. For example, here we have a frame and it has two columns and both the columns have different length. And if it is subjected to uniformly distributed load, so both the columns will have same loading or the same axial stress but the column which is long so it will have more lateral bending as well as more axial deformation compared with the column which is of shorter length so as a result when the deformation in both the column is different so this frame will deflect in this manner so there will be some lateral movement as well so there will be some lateral movement of frame and that is termed as lateral drift or side sway. So the next is when columns have different cross-sectional properties. So if we have a frame which have two columns, both are of same dimension or same height, but their cross-sectional dimension are different. So here this column, the second column have the higher or the double moment of inertia as compared to the first column. So the column which have less second moment of area, so it will have more deformation or more lateral bending as well as definitely its axial deformation will also be more because the area of that section may be less. So when this column have less cross-sectional area as well as less second moment of area or we can say it has more deformation lateral as well as axial so as a result the frame will deflect in this manner. So there will be some lateral movement of the frame which is termed as drift or side sway. So the unequal sectional properties of columns can also cause side sway in a building frame. So the next is loads are unsymmetrical. So if loads are unsymmetrical on the frame, so the column which have larger value of load, so it will deform more, it will have more axial as well as lateral deformation. So as a result, the frame will deflect like this. So we will have some lateral deformation of the frame or we, we will have side sway of the frame. So the next source of side sway is lateral load. So if a lateral load is acting on the frame, so definitely it will try to deflect the frame in the horizontal direction. So this will produce side sway in the frame. Okay, next is the prevention measures for the side sway. So side sway can be prevented in a frame by providing shear wall or partition wall. So if we have a frame like this, so if we provide shear wall inside it, so because of the lateral load or the other sources of the side sway, so when the lateral load will act, so it this shear wall inside it will not allow this frame to deform. So, so the next prevention measure can be fixing the top of frame with adjoining rigid structure. So we can fix this frame with some adjoining structure if possible. For example, here we have a rigid structure, so we can fix its top with the adjoining rigid structure. So in that way we can also prevent the lateral drift. So the next is provision of property properly designed lift well or shear wall in a building which may act like backbone of the structure reducing the lateral deflection. So in case of buildings, the portion where we have 
lift so the walls of lift can be designed in such a way that they can resist the lateral drift or they can resist the shear forces developed in the building because of the lateral force so this will act as a backbone of the structure and it will try to resist the lateral drift or sway of the building The shear wall is a structural wall that resists shear forces resulting from the applied transverse load in its own plane and it produces frame stability. So the shear walls will resist the shear forces developed because of this lateral load. So here we have a wall. So they will resist the shear forces. So the next preventive measure can be the application of bracing. So the bracing can be diagonal as well as longitudinal. To increase the rigidity of the structure against the lateral drift or lateral deformation, we can provide the bracing. So if the bracings are in this manner, so these are termed as lateral bracing. So if the load is acting in the horizontal direction, so this bracing will undergo tension and it will resist the lateral deformation and this bracing will be in compression. Or we can also provide some longitudinal bracings like this so they will also help to reduce the lateral drift of the structure so an unbraced frame is defined as one in which resistance to lateral load is provided by the bending resistance of frame members and their connection without any additional bracings so unbraced frame, if the resistance to the lateral load is just provided by the columns. So then it is termed as a unbraced frame. But if the resistance against this lateral load is provided by the bracing element or the shear wall, so then it is termed as braced frame. 